welcome Rock Creek HOA. Thanks. For, Thank uh, you. Thanks for having us. Dinner. And uh, why don't we go around and do a quick round of introductions. Sure thing. Clint Folsom, Mayor. Kevin Ryan, one of the trustees. So I'm John Eckhart. I'm on the board, President. Hi, I'm Laura Spajinski, trustee. Mark Lasis, Mayor of Bedtown. You and Matt Matt Magley, town manager. Brian Schultikoff. And I'll remember. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the treasurer? Yes, yeah, so I'm trustee. Trustee. called me back. <laughs> Sandy Hammerly, trustee. Ken Lewis, trustee. All right. Thanks again for coming. We have um, until about 635, 640 to talk this evening. We've got some advisory committee interviews at 650, so we need to break down this table and kind of get ready for the regular meeting. So let's just sure. plan our discussions uh, according to about um, less than an hour. Uh, we don't have any listed topics on here, yeah. but um, so it's kind of open to whatever we would like to discuss. But um, I think a, a good place to start might be um, just a, you know, a high level uh, introduction from the homeowners association. I know there's been some changes on the board and changes with uh, the uh, architectural committee and probably many other things that uh, you all could update us on. So maybe give us some sure. high level inter um, updates and then we'll just kind of go from there. That's a great topic. I thought I'd have to come up with more other things, be more creative than that. So um, it's been a super busy board year for us. Every, I'm, I'm, this is my fourth year on the no, this is, I've been, this is me, this is my fifth year um, on the board, um, and I don't think I've ever seen us have more activity in any given year than we have right now. Um, we're in the process of um, going through an RFP for our management company. Um, the management contract with Haven uh, is up at the end of this year, and so uh, we started at the beginning of this year with developing a process for how we wanted to evaluate potentially getting a new management company um, or keeping the same one, but it was time to do an RFP uh, for sure. And so we've put a ton of energy into that process. We um, built that RFP, built that process, solicited feedback from um, more than a dozen um, management companies. We got responses from eight of those. Um, a month and a half ago, we pared down our finalist list to three. Uh, the three finalists are Associate of Colorado, um, Cherry Creek HOA Professionals, and um, Grand Manor slash Real Manage. Um, they're a company based out of Dallas, but they have a they have a local presence here in the Denver area. It's Rock Creek, uh, the, the um, Cherry Creek HOA Pros is in Aurora, but they also have a satellite office here in, in uh, Superior and Associate is out of Lakewood, so everybody's got sort of a local presence, although some are a little closer than others. And last month, we had our first, um, so all three of those finalists are coming in to give us proposals, or they've all given us proposals, but they're all coming in to give us uh, in-person um, pitches, so to speak, and walk us through their proposals and highlight the things that they think are their strengths and things that we've asked them to highlight, such as, you know, what is their technology sort of, uh, platform look like and how can that help us increase our service levels there's definitely always the personal component and that's very much valued but there's also the how do we have let people have access to uh, their information with modern means um, and that's been sort of lacking for a little while so um, did haven respond to the rfp they did okay uh haven being our current management company yes, <laughs> yes. and uh and they were not selected for a finalist okay um what are the primary things you're looking for? Uh, you put me on the spot a little bit. Sorry. I, uh, I, I would refer you to our RFP, but um, there were eight criteria, eight primary criteria we were evaluating on. Um, um, but, the, but that was, um, technology was one, one big piece, and then just being sizable enough to service a community of our size, right? So we we're 2804 homes, and you know, that's not for everybody. <laughs> How long is he? Price was part of it, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so one individual uh, who's not a haven per se, Shannon Massier, has been around this community for almost 20 years um, and is an invaluable resource, obviously. Um, haven per se, 
has been, and these are just sort of round numbers. If you want specific numbers, I'll give you better information, but the Haven's been around for about 10, 10 of those years. And, um, but they went through a management change that was sort of covert and not well, um, uh, advertised to the community or to the board or anyone. So um, I won't use any names, but there was a person who bought basically um, the, the, the bulk of the interest in the company about three years ago and sort of quietly changed a lot of things behind the scenes. And it was more in the results that we were finding that those th we realized things were happening only because of sort of the results that occurred because of those changes. So um, there's been concern for several years that, that those service levels have been in steady decline. And, um, and so, um, you know, that was one of the reasons why we really needed to go to RFP this year, so that we could most certain, you know, obviously our memberships are our most important concern. So making sure that um, that we serve them the best we can um, is the number one goal. And we found three fantastic companies that we think, there was a lot of good companies. I mean, um, and Haven's a plenty good company. There's nothing per se to say there, except that we thought we found some other folks, some other groups that would serve us better. So we're moving forward with one of them. Don't know which one yet. But uh, last month we had our first of the three. Associate came in. I think the HOA board members that are here would, would probably agree that it was a fantastic presentation, lots of interesting insights. It's really curious when you've done something one way for two decades or a decade or more to then have fresh ideas come in. It's like, oh yeah, you know, we could absolutely be doing this, that, or the third. So I think we were all pleasantly surprised with the caliber of the presentation and the caliber of their uh, offering. And, and I'm hoping that we have two more just like it and a terribly hard decision to make in a, in a couple of months. Um, with three fantastic companies that could all serve us extremely well. One of the things that I thought was interesting, if I remember correctly, from a few years ago during that transition was there were some additional charges that were going to the HOA for licensure of the technology platform that Haven was bringing. Will, as part of the RFP requirements, are they required to bring the platform effectively with them so it's not the town board, it's not your not the town board, the HOA board licensing the platform separately? Yeah, so they, they currently, best of my knowledge, are not charging us for that, but there were some uh, conversations around whether or not in order to get better platforms, we could perhaps like buy them or license them from some third party and then ask Haven to sort of adopt them and use them, which would be thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of expense, never mind training, never right. mind like transition and all that kind of stuff. So share ownership. Yeah. So we never we never pulled the trigger on anything like that, and that wasn't the case. But all these re all these re responses include everything. Right? So um, yeah. Are you guys doing a special uh, uh, election for replacing uh, Peter? Yeah. Um, new topic, but totally cool. Um, yeah, sorry, family. Just to finish off, we have two more presentations. So we have one later this week on Thursday from Rock Creek. Uh, pardon me, I keep saying Rock Creek, but Cherry Creek. Um, HOA pros, they're coming in on Thursday, and then a month from that will be our final one, which is real man. So if anybody wants to come. And for those watching at home, that's a public meeting. Public I meeting, I come down. Right, I I saw it. Come on down. Sadly, we don't have this set up. We can't uh, broadcast, but uh, everyone's welcome, of course. And there won't be food. <laughs> <laughs> no the, food, no cameras. Not on our budget. What's and the so timeline for the decision? Yeah, I was just going to ask, is 829 still on track? What is 829? As the anticipated award date. I think it's likely that it'll be a month out from that, okay. and we should probably in our next newsletter. I think we should advertise that the um, the eight twenty nine will be the final meeting date, so that'll be our final presentation. We had to slip. Um, gotcha. We had so many respondents that we had to actually take one month to just like sort it all out, right? Yeah. So that put our dates, our original dates, back about a month. Um, so it'll be that last Thursday in September that would be like the final decision point for sure, okay. and that's nice because. The people we talked to, um, you know, in order to facilitate like a really nice smooth transition, a few months of time at the end of the year to sort of facilitate that um, is desirable, right? You don't want to like make that decision on December 1st and hope it is all good by January 1st kind of thing. So obviously it'll be a very, very uh, measured and, and um, deliberate transition there as well. 
so yeah, um, good question. Um, architectural. Architectural? Changes. Or do we want to do Ken's question first? Ken's. No preference. What was your question again? I should probably uh, remember. It was like 30 seconds ago. Back, back Peter, back. good old Peter. We have, I don't know, others may have better information, and I hope you guys will jump in if you do, but the only information that was provided to us from Peter was, um, you know, I can't do this. I have to, I have to step down. Um, so we just inferred that was personal reasons and, and let it be that. Um, as far as whether, uh, we definitely want to replace um, his seat on the board. The way that's done is not necessarily with a special election, although there's a, we have a little bit of latitude and I sort of wish Shannon was here to make sure that I don't put my uh, foot in my mouth, but we could call for a special election. Those are prohibitively sort of difficult logistically for us to facilitate. Um, what typically happens, we could we could go to the, the, the runner-up candidates from last year's election. Sadly, the runner-up candidate is not available anymore uh, for his own personal reasons. Um, and so now uh, the decision will just be with the board. So we can elect um, from, from our candidates pool uh, someone to take over basically all of Peter's term, which is the bulk of three years. And we have two candidates right now. Um, one was uh, Diane, I forget exactly how to pronounce her last name, but Marsala, something to that effect, and, uh, and Chris Nunez. Chris Nunez, I mean, Diane, you know from the airport issue, and Chris is part of the new ACC, um, relatively recent Rock Creek uh, member, and all around good guy, lots of great ideas, really eager to pursue some of those, and um, we, we debated it <laughs> at our last board meeting, and we really couldn't decide. The, the, uh, I won't go into why, but we, we couldn't quite pull the trigger on either candidate, um, so we have to revisit that this Thursday. But we'll try to make a we'll try to make a decision. They both have real strengths, and, and so yeah, it was just sort of a tough tough decision. Um, to end, so that that sort of segues well into the ACC changes. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Payne, who's been at the helm of the ACC and uh, you know the board for that matter for a long time. Uh, stepped down at the end of last year. Um, along with him, some of our ACC membership did the same thing, and uh, um, one one of five carried over. His name is uh, Brian. Why am I living? forgetting? Hauk. Brian Hauk is still on the on the, on the committee, um, and the rest are new. So there's uh, I'm going to forget a couple of names, but there's uh, Sean and uh, Chris Nunez and Aruna and Harry. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have all their last names, but we, we basically put four new people. Uh, nom they were all, they nominated themselves. We sent out the newsletter, said there was availability. Um, and so we spent the first few months of this year really trying to train them on uh, what are the CCNRs for Rock Creek? And what are the basic, po what are the policies we have in place today? And what are the basic um, kind of procedures and policies here? Um, and they picked that up really, really easily. One thing that has really gone well with the ACC this year, I think, um, and it's uh, part of the, because of the transition. Actually, uh, we have been able to implement a little bit of tech uh, around the ACC process in particular, so that's not visible to our membership. Uh, our membership can't log in and view that process or be a part of that process in any way. But um, but that committee uses this platform uh, to help facilitate online voting and online distribution of documents and online evaluation of the applications. And so our application turnaround time has gone from a number that I not, I mean, I, I could throw a number out there months, couple of 60, 90 days types of turnarounds on average with a few just extreme outliers, uh, to, uh, you know, in the 10 day range at this point. So lots of our membership, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm sure you get some of this in, in the town board role. It's like when things go better, you don't hear the positive accolades, but when things go bad, you hear, you know, not the not so positive accolades or whatever. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's really quiet out there, and that's a good sign, I think. Um, and the fact that those those applications are moving relatively swiftly is, is nice. So the you know the downside of having Chris join the board would be that he's such a such an integral part of a highly functioning ACC board that or ACC committee that why would we want to? Screw that up. <laughs> but um, but say lobby, he'd be a fan, fine asset. Anyway, uh, so the ACC, um, that's a major part of the, um, the the proposal as well, the the management company proposal. So, you know, our board obviously doesn't manage a whole lot of facilities. We don't have, um, you know, the parks to take care of. We don't have a clubhouse to take care of. 
we obviously all of us could uh, collaborate a little bit on like holiday lights and, and stuff like that but um, you know the vast bulk uh, and the vast majority of the work that the uh, management company has to do either is the ACC process or a rubber up revolved around the ACC process or you know um, enforcement of um, the ACC policies and the general um, policies of the, of, the, of the community so um, so they've been highlighting that in their proposals, which is nice. Um, but I think overall, to just sort of summarize, the ACC committee is doing really, really well. I don't know if you guys have any feedback for us on that. You're all members. I don't know if anybody's put in any deck requests recently or painted their house or any of that good jazz, but if it's been nice and swift for you, I hope, I hope it's been. That was a goal. I got scared off several years ago. So. <laughs> you don't get any approvals for your work at this point? Not a couple of years ago, so I'm sure it's better now. <laughs> I put a rain barrel request in, I got approval within 24 hours. So. Right. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's fantastic. That's great. Glad to hear that. Can you speak to any, uh, any changes regarding um, new color schemes or, or things, sure. things like that? It seems like I heard some discussion yeah. of that a while back. That. So moving away, like not talking so much per se about the committee, but just talking about the ACC in general and those policies. Um, so we're, you know, at the current time, all the policies, there's one that's changed very slightly, but most of the, the vast majority of the, and the bulk of our policies uh, are the same today as they were a year ago. Um, we're just operating a little bit better on, on, on taking the you know, application, applying the policy to it and rendering some sort of decision about that. But there's, so the second piece, the second major piece of work for the HOA board right now is this this sort of working group, or this uh, conversation, this long conversation about, we're calling it Rock On. Um, that was actually Sandy uh, Pennington's name for it at one point. She, is, she had thrown that out there. So if you're watching, that's there, there's, your, there's your credit right there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's basically the idea um, that, uh, you know, the, the community is 25 years old right now, um, and it looks very much the same as it looked 25 years ago. There's a lot, a lot of really good things. That's a really good thing in a lot of ways, right? Like it doesn't look run down per se. It doesn't look bad. It just looks like 1996 out there. Um, that being said, we're getting pressure from our membership to think about the future and think about not even the future per se, alone but today right we're 25 years after the fact and how do we take a 25 year old community and try to help it without violating obviously our p our you know our pd and everything like that how do we evolve into something that's continues to be attractive to um to to boulderites for all intents and purposes right um so um you know we've been really inside the box with our thinking and our policies and that's fantastic or inside of a box, um, and so the Rock On project is one where we're um, spending some money with a architectural firm. We did another R kind of another RFP process there. It's much smaller. There were only about three respondents, and there was one pretty obvious choice, quite obvious choice, um, in the Norris group. And they are taking um, right now. Actually, uh, they're going through all of our policies. They're going through those those governing documents. And they're coming up with a survey that we're going to start sending out probably in about I don't know, as early as two weeks from now and probably no later than a month um, where we'll try um, to get some feedback from the community about if you had choices what would they look like right would you would you gravitate more towards this would you gravitate more towards this is is some is some latitude with garage doors the most important thing for you or do you want different paint colors or do you want other roofing options or do you want what do you want right and then you know not only what do you want but and I haven't seen these questions so I you know it's possible that that we're miscommunicating I certainly hope not but in addition to you know what kinds of options would you like like just having more garage door options for example what kinds of garage doors are we talking about right? are we talking about like wood doors are we talking about metal doors are we talking about you know what exactly is the look and feel of the things that you'd be attracted to in, in evolving the look and feel of your home. Um, so it should tell us a couple of things. What kinds of things are people interested in, in general, and in those categories, like what sort of, where's, where, where, where are our tastes and things like that. Um, so there's, there's that coming out. And then um, we're gonna take that to the streets 
a little bit. There's been some desire inside of our board to have a little bit more community, like live and in color community interaction. So I think we're gonna go to our movie nights with iPads and sort of put boots on the ground, so to speak, and try and get people to engage with us on that survey and make sure we drive as much engagement and as much participation as possible because ultimately somebody might make some decisions with this data. And um, obviously we want to have as much coverage as absolutely possible. So, so that's uh, our second major initiative this year is to, is to start not necessarily changing those policies now um, or ever, but at least collecting the data so that we have something to kind of guide us towards what the future might look like and what the community wants so that uh, in, you know, any decision we make is at least based on information, not whims or thoughts or what have you. As part of the uh, process of looking at you know, what colors work well in a you know, master plan community, are you taking a look at the fence stain color as well? Oh my god. <laughs> You're a brave man. Mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> Okay. Can I speak to that? Sure. So basically, every time I've ever brought that up from the first day that I was on the board to now, it's like, gasp, that can't be done. So, because of the cost to do it all at once, I assume? No, I don't think so, although that's offered a lot, right? Um, I think, I mean, the, the prevailing reason is because of the PD, which is where that particular color is specified. Mm -hmm we have to have 75 percent participation of our entire community in person or by proxy to vote a new color in so not only do we have to drive 75 percent participation which for our annual board meetings if we're lucky we get five to ten we have to drive 75 percent participation and then we have to agree on a color so like <laughs> damn that's hard yeah. um that being said like when people come in to our board meetings these days, I, I encourage it. Like, let's absolutely talk about it. Let's see if we can. I'm not saying no, I'm just telling you how hard it is. But I think if everybody was working in unison and pulling in the right direction and we had like just, it would take a little coordination and probably a lot of patience, but we could probably pull hard enough in the right direction to get it done someday. And frankly, I don't think anyone likes the color. I don't know, if one, I've never heard one person defend the color, but. So we can, it's in the, it, it'll likely be in the survey, actually. You know, I I hear you, but um, <laughs> it seems like if there's a color that everybody universally loathes that happens to be in a PD, uh, that there is a means to deal with that, and you know, to just kind of throw our hands up in the air and say, "Never going to happen," and we're going to need to get you know, X percentage. I think. We need to talk to the town attorney, talk to the HOA's attorney, figure out a way to, to solve this problem. Because I think that the community would overwhelmingly support a fix. Because it, that's that's one of the most dated part, parts right. of, of this entire community. I mean, yeah. you know, and it, you know, it's it's not going to be that hard to agree on a, on, a, on a color, right? I mean, we don't need to have consensus in the entire community, but you have some sort of decent color brown that doesn't look like vomit, um, it'll be fine and it'll be workable. It's something that's a little more uh, timeless that'll actually you know, stand the test of time. Yeah, John, I would just, I don't remember exactly what what the rule was, but I know at the summit, I used to be on the board yeah. at the summit, when we were trying to make a major rule change to our decks, because we were trying to get take over the responsibilities for the decks and stuff. There is a way in Colorado law, and you'd have to get your attorney to look into it, that you can, um, it's it's almost like a negative vote is a positive vote, kind of, you know, like the ballot is that if you don't respond to it, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I could probably get association and community management to, to tell me what it was we were gonna try and do, sure. because there was a way we could, get around it um, and I'll see if I I'll ask them if they can and I'll send you an email or something that might be the way to get around your fence you know the fence paint color it doesn't impact the summit but I know there was a way we were going to try and do that so um, but it, it was a weird rule and you had to do it 
the language a real particular way, but if it was like by a certain date, you haven't said no or something that it's that you are deemed to have voted yes. Um, a good budget, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's sort of like the way you ratify the budget. So um, I'll see if I can, I'll write them and I'll ask them because it might be a way to get around something that isn't controversial. I mean, ours ended up, ours was relatively controversial because we were changing, taking over, doing the deck, so it's going to cost our members more. Sure. But there was a way to do it. So um, I think we're all ears. Absolutely. I know the fence paint's been. A nightmare for, for Rock Creek. What about the, but not the teal, the teal color of everything else? All the light posts and the little cap pieces and Let's do it all. Yeah, can we can we put that on the table while we're at it? Dark brown, hunter green, we're fine for another twenty-five years. <laughs> Is that something you guys can? I mean, that's an honest question. After that, I'm just curious. Is that that's an that's an issue? I think because of the body language, you guys have probably touched on already. Well, Matt, we, wasn't there a discussion or at least uh, movement on updating some of the poles throughout town? It was Excel who was doing that? Am I remembering correctly? <clears throat> the larger coverhead poles that are painted, those are slowly being transitioned to galvanized steel poles because yeah. of the long term maintenance. Um, so those will lose color over the years because we're going to the, the newer poles. Um, the smaller poles. <laughs> like on Rock Creek Parkway in the medians and you see throughout the neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, those are poles that we get through Excel uh, when they need to be replaced and uh, have to check on color and see how that's... Okay. And the monument caps, there's like little roofs on a lot of the monument. Because those are all the same color. Anyway, I like the word, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Does the new sign of Rock Creek Village have, that, have those color caps? I can't recall. I don't remember. Uh, no. I agree. And I start, we're going to start painting it out. Nice. I'm not a fan of that green in there. So, I think we covered. Yeah, go ahead. What have you heard, if anything, about the, there was some hail about two weeks ago that Truck. And, okay. Uh, just wondering if you had any roof claims from that. If it was, it didn't seem, I don't know, any, any on the roof. I'm yeah. just kind of wondering if, if you've seen any roof claims uh, come through. I know there was a surge, you know, a couple of years ago. Right. Everybody got a new roof. Right. 13, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. 14. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? 2014. 14. Yeah. That's what it was. Um, I would have to run. I would have to look. I, I don't think so. I, my neighbor had somebody come out and check her roof, and and they didn't do any paperwork. So that's the only that's the only thing I know. I think it was pretty spotty. My roof is going to get replaced. Is it? Uh, in all likelihood, uh, I know a couple of people in my neighborhood. Same thing. However, two streets down, they've had people on their roofs, and no one's getting anything new. So I think it really was one of those micro cells that whatever part of superior you're in. Okay. Yeah, with best of my knowledge, there was no, there's no, there's no backlog of roof requests right now. I had a question about the events. I know sure. in the RFP you listed all the events as is, um, and I'm sure all of you saw on Facebook there was that whole conversation around. What events should we Facebook. have? Ah. Well, <laughs> it's the biggest waste. Well, there, no way. there was a conversation around should we have casino night? It's only for adults, it excludes people, etc. And um, so I was just curious if you guys were revisiting any any of the events, whether it's casino night or others, or whether currently proceeding is planned. Not at the present time. Um, there's literally at least one person usually at every annual meeting that asks that question. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, opinions vary, right? Um, I think it's a fairly valuable event. I think a lot of people get a lot of value, get a lot, have a lot of fun at it, and um, it's really successful in the sense that we have to keep adding money to it a little bit over time to keep up with, you know, the increased attendance. It seems like, you know, if it was really an unpopular event, it'd be going in the other direction or staying flat with yep. the few people that liked it or whatever. Oh, I, I agree. I think it's a fantastic event, and I'm hoping you don't 
Oh, there's no plans to really at the moment. That conversation came from anything, or if it was just people. I think we're just too busy to talk to even to really take it seriously. I, for the for anyone in the peanut gallery, like of course we would listen. Of course we would want to potentially, you know, consider that. I just we have three major issues on the on the docket this year, and uh, yeah, changing the, the events was not uh, okay. was not at the highest priority item. Um, there was some there was another complaint actually about Chick Fil A. Um, could we maybe get some variety around that, or some other vendors involved? And we did put that to our event coordinator. And, and one of the reasons why we use Chick Fil A is that everybody—I mean, the vast majority of people—really enjoy that. Um, but it's also, from a food service and food safety perspective, it's one of the easiest things to provide there. It's all individually packaged. They're right across the street. You don't have to worry about keeping things hot or keeping things cold as they come, you know, from miles and miles away. And it's you know hot, fresh, and ready right there. Um, but obviously, when you have 2,804 plus times five or whatever opinions, like some people like it, some people don't. Um, so we have challenged. Um, I, I mean, challenge is kind of the, in the lightest possible use of that word. We've challenged our event coordinator to maybe think about some other alternatives for food. But this, the, the, the events themselves and the, and, the, and the fundamental concept, nobody's nobody's thought about changing those. Okay. Very much not yet, anyway. Is Jones the one that part of Rock on Survey? No. I think no. Purely architectural. Can you put your This is Leon. Same play. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to toss out to you. The other night we had a uh, uh, sort of how do we make the community better um, meeting. Um, and one of the ideas that came up. Uh, as opposed to always doing the movies in the park, was to actually do a drive-in movie in the wintertime and do it down like in the, um, in the marketplace parking lot. It, it was kind of a unique, cool, interesting idea. Um, and I know, because you guys are limited, you do most everything in the summer. So I just thought I'd throw that idea out that maybe when you get your new company, they could consider whether there might be a way to to do a drive-in movie in the wintertime. Sure. Um, you know, or at least when the weather is not quite so. And to um, clarify, the uh, provider of the events and the provider of our management services are not the same. So we put, uh, we mentioned those events in the uh, RFP for two reasons. One is because it's, you know, kind of our, okay. it happens a lot, right? It's something that they help support um, in general. Um, if it happened to be in their wheelhouse that they are really big on throwing parties and doing events and they wanted to bid out in addition to the management services, the event coordination services, that would have been okay with us, but literally not one of them did that. And, um, and uh, Lisa Schmall and Events Creations, who has been doing this for years, there was no, there was no, I mean, there's no reason to need to look for a new vendor or anything like that. It was just something that was in the RFP as a sort of, if you'd like to address it or talk about it, we could. Okay. But, um, but so, so, the, so the event company will be the same, just for the record. So I've got two other topics I'd like to touch Shoot. on. Yeah. So one, uh, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, waste diversion uh, is becoming more uh, of a topic people are looking at and uh, getting a feel for and trying to improve throughout uh, Colorado <laughs> and Front Range. Uh, Boulder's really good at it. The rest of us in Boulder County are not so good at it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the uh, liaison with our uh, advisory committee on environmental sustainability. This is a problem and topic they want to tackle uh, to see what can we do in town to uh, improve this. That's a difficult topic to tackle since waste management is done by multiple uh, big groups. Um, you guys clearly are the ones that manage waste, uh, the waste management contract for Run Creek. Mm -hmm. um, which is the bulk of the superiors right now. Uh, it, and I don't know I don't know what they want to do going forward. I don't know what the process will be, but is uh, is this something I can put them in contact with you guys on uh, to see if we can clearly if we can start to get economies of scale going in the right direction, if we can start getting more compost going. I mean right now compost is only on limited time. Uh, my understanding is it's somewhat cost prohibitive uh, as well. I mean all that starts to become more advantageous the more we start to use our numbers to our benefit. I'm not sure if I or the rest of the board understands the, the top level topic there. What did you, what was you, what so, you labeled? Uh, waste. Top level waste diversion. So, diversion? Yeah. 
putting in less, <laughs> less in the landfill, more towards compost, more towards recycling, basically trying to put it into places where it has higher value than just going into the earth. Gotcha. Um, so on the, the waste contract, you know, we, re, we renewed that just last year. Um, one of the reasons why we stay with the 56 gallon drums for recycling and for um, trash it, on a weekly basis is because there's a different ways to play that game. You can like do recycling every other week or whatever. We wanted to keep the recycling bins big to encourage people to use them as much as they possibly could. Um, and compost is available to everybody in Rock Creek today. Yep. Um, there is a charge, a surcharge. I think it's 10 bucks a month or it's something. 125 like that. for the season. For the season, okay. is yeah, that just in April through October? Okay. So that's for the town. Is that for, for the house? For the okay. house. Yeah, so I have that, so it's 125. Let's see. Nice. How does it work? I don't know every if I got a week. But <clears throat> every other Wednesday, they pick up the stinky trip, the stinky bin. And <laughs> the brown bin? Out. No, it's a, it's a blue bin. It says compost only, but after a oh, week really? of fermentation, or two weeks of fermentation, it's, a, it's pretty ranked. So they pick it up every other week? Every other Wednesday. Yeah. For a fee? Yeah, and you just call waste management directly and right. set it up, drop the bin off, and they drive by and pick it up. Yeah. I thought it was a weekly thing, but um, yeah. but yeah, I'm sure you know better than I actually. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's one of the questions in terms of within the Rock Creek community, we roll this out to everybody, you know, or is it sort of on an ad hoc individual basis? Right now, it's, it's sort of it's, voluntary. Yeah. yeah. We've always struggled with this. Um, well, you're going to accuse me of being an environmental disaster, but we've always struggled with this from a cost perspective. Yeah. Every time we've done an analysis of, you know, nearby and, and distant uh, you know, realms that get off our trash for or recycling either single stream or multi. Um, we've always found that we're rather inexpensive from a cost standpoint, and really no different than the town, um, or not much different than what you have. And when we compare ourselves, it doesn't really matter who it is, Louisville, Lafayette, Boulder, Highlands Ranch, which, you know, it's 100,000 people, and they're paying more than we are for trash. We've always struggled with this notion that we're going to go times two, times three, times four to offer you know, this to all of, all of our members. Um, but if this is something that's important to you, and you know, I'm sure the town has had thoughts in this regard, and you renegotiated last time as well, and I guess you did it on an ad hoc basis also, right? Yeah. It's because it's the dynamic that it, it would be, at least from what I can tell from what Louisville pays, it would be times three. Yeah, and I think that's, so it's very early on, maybe I'm trying to figure out what to do here, and. and in early research with Boulder, because they, they're the shining star, they're just multiples ahead of everybody else in, in what they're what they're doing as far as diverting from the landfill. And basically, it's set in ordinances. They are requiring people to compost, and I think that when you require people to do it, or at least buy a compost bin and have to have it there, that's that's what's doing it. And I don't know if that's anything that we'd ever want to go down that road, or if the committee would ever give us that recommendation to go that way. But whether there was anything in the time and that's I think that's the type of feedback the community was or the committee's hoping to hear that this is why we haven't done it fast. Although that's on a comparative basis. You know, right. you mentioned the economies of scale, you're saying it's only 125 a year. Yeah. So you figure that if we were to roll this out to the entire town and our entire membership, it wouldn't be times three, it would be more like times one and a half, one and three quarters. Uh -huh. Perhaps less if we're benefiting from economies of scale. So that's possibly available as well. That means we need to increase our annual assess fee for 180 bucks for every homeowner. Are you going to risk that? I think the, the trade-off is arguably your, your waste consumption, the amount of waste that you produce and get picked up every week would go down. So, you know, arguably maybe smaller bins for the neighborhood, you know, less for uh, waste management. Uh, that, that's a conversation yeah. I think ACES is trying to strike. Yes. You know, the trade-off among diversion away from, yep. from um, landfill, uh, you know, what cost trade-off can we make within the town to increase recycling and uh, compost? From a working capital standpoint, most oh, of these voters have been out there 15 years, if not more. Yeah. And so to replace them, we're going to charge you sure. $7,500. But um, you know, maybe we do it for other than fiscal reasons. Yeah. Well, I think there's got to be a big community uh, outreach component to this, too. I mean, you have to buy in from the community, and I don't know that we've heard a huge push from the community wanting to do it. I mean, it's clearly on the radar. Uh, a lot of people, but we have to go out and, I think, as you guys said, boots on the ground, get buy-in first before we start increasing fees and whatnot.
not to actually make it happen. Yeah. You know, from personal experience, having multiple properties in Boulder that are required to have the compost bins, they are used very infrequently. Now I have maybe a different segment of properties than yeah. the, the average residential property, but um, and, and then a large amount of stuff that I see in the recycle bins is, is contaminated. So I, I think yeah. they're, yes, their numbers are better, but I, I don't know that it's, they're facing a, if, if you've been out to EcoCycle lately oh, yeah. and you see the massive piles of stuff that they have out there, they, they can't get rid of the materials. So that's, you know, it feels good to recycle all this stuff, but they actually got to sell it and they can't sell it right now. And it's just piling up out there. So that's the other other challenge. I, I appreciate how much we've done to um, you know, the, improve the yard waste facility, the you know, drive-through ability. The, um, you know, that's you know, I, I think that's been a good, good step forward for at least um, yard waste disposal. Yeah. I, I'm also just trying to bring up the topic just give you guys a heads up that the ACES committee might reach out to at some point to gather information or talk, talk to you show up your meetings and We'd welcome, public comment. We'd welcome that, absolutely. One of the things that just jumped out though, about the meeting that we had with ACES is when we were comparing ourselves to other communities, right? Mm -hmm. like you mentioned Boulder, but you know, looking at where Superior stands in relation to Louisville and Lafayette, like we're really just falling short of, you know, just in terms of not, not even talking about composting, but just talking about recycling, right? Like, you know, things that, come on, this isn't, you know, 1991 anymore, like it's, Recycle your cans and your bottles, people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there, there's yeah. definitely something that we can do better uh, because other communities are doing better than we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's the challenge we're trying to tackle. Right. We'll see how they do. So, I think the other topic I wanted to bring up, I think, just kind of the big one that's been floating around, and I, I don't know how much you guys can speak to it. I've looked at some of your agendas, I know it pops up in executive session, uh, but just Rocky Mountain Airport. Uh, you, I'm sure you guys all have seen the, the stuff that is on our agendas. We uh, have a consultant uh, that is working with them on airport noise mitigation. Uh, I was interested in seeing if there was any, uh, any room for collaboration or hearing what you guys are doing and seeing what we can do going forward. And if not, if we can have attorneys talk to each other or any type of solution. <laughs> not yeah. solution, but just path. Conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're taking that issue real seriously. I think I can speak in a couple of really general terms. I mean, it's a very serious issue for a lot of our constituency, those of us that are on either side of it. I think the bulk of our constituency is on one side of it, but we don't have any data for that, just the emails and the, and the people that show up to the meetings and voice their opinions. There's a ratio there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a potential legal issue for us. Um, we have talked to two different um, lawyers. Uh, one of them's contacted your lawyer in the past, um, but I don't know if uh, um, I don't know if we got the information exchanged properly or not, or what happened exactly. Who was that? I'm sorry. Who was that? Her name is Cindy Manzano. Yeah, she and I talked several times and shared information. Okay. Um, the other one um, is a fellow, uh, there's a specialist, an aviation specialist now named John Wright, who's also involved. He's present here today. He's the yeah, fellow waving at you back there. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, I, I, I really don't know if I can say anything more than that right now, but, but um, we're trying to be you know, as unbiased and as fair as possible. And um, obviously we have a membership and a constituency to protect and, and, and uh, way of life to promote here so um, we're we're taking we th you know we think there could be a problem so you're i'm trying to understand the point of view your point of view is you think there could be a problem that's what i just said yeah 100 percent. i mean problem most of where? our excuse me sorry problem where i'm just trying to understand just me too in uh do you in our community okay but do you have I, i'll just be blunt do you do you believe that the town of Superior is a, are, are you disappointed, to use that term, with the town of Superior? Do you believe that no. the target of any potential litigation or dis 
appointment oh. is with the town of Superior. Are we lawyering, lawyering up against the town? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> I mean, just ask that's a fair one. question. No, no. I mean, so the, the, grievance, the potential grievance would be with the airport. Yeah. Thank you. And what operations they plan to support and how that could detract from our quality of life and our home values and everything like that. Well, no, I, I appreciate you asking that question because you know, one of the, the concerns that we get and you know, we hear from probably the same people that you're, you're hearing from and everybody's saying to the, the navigation easement that everybody talks about, right? But you know, the town is not a party to the navigation easement. Right? Right. So the navigation easement is something that for the people that live in Rock Creek is one of the stack of papers that you get when you close on your house and it's in there. Um, but you know, when they when they come to us and they say, okay, let's let's enforce this navigation easement. Say, okay, well, you need to understand that we're not a party as a town. Right. You, know, you as a as a homeowner are you know, a recipient of it. And you're on notice of it, but it's not something the town has In the ability to enforce. Best of your knowledge, no one outside of the Rock Creek community signs that easement. Everyone else in Sagamore and Old Town, there's no such document for them. Or right, right. Do you know? Yeah, no, so, I mean, my, I looked at it a long time ago, my, my recollection is that the navigation easement was negotiated by Richmond when they were planning to build a creek, and, and really, I mean, it's, it's to cover Richmond, it's behind, right, so when they sold the, ho the houses to everybody, and then everybody said, oh my god, there's an airport here, I said, well, we told you about it, here's the navigation easement, it wasn't for the benefit of the community, it was for the benefit of the building. So it's on title, right. yeah, and it's on title. It's not something you're signing. There's, there's no, yeah, it's, it's just something on title. So it's it's just to put you on notice. I mean, there's right. other, many other things on there as well, but you're not signing per se. Right. So. Well, we're not after you guys <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd like to cooperate if we can. Um, but it's hard to talk about those things, and so we might send our lawyers, your lawyers, way, if that's okay that's with you. Yeah, I did already talk to the other lawyer, so. She felt, yeah, so anyway, um, it could happen again. I live here 17 years. I think this is the largest complaint, this gas, gas issues. We take care of that one. And this is the well, second largest homeowner complain about these issues. So at least four months I think over two hundred home complain. Okay. Well, we can we can the way we can do it is uh, that's why we, that's why we're hiring a consultant and trying to, to work with the city of Louisville to yeah. represent all the, yes. the people who live here because you know we're we're feeling it too. You know, this isn't an HOA thing, this is a town spirit thing totally. as well. Are there any revelations you can speak to in regard to the consultant? The meeting at the airport was almost a full year ago. We'll Has be hearing from the consultant again in today's presentation. Right. So and then they're you guys can stick around. It's one of the first items on our agenda. And their, their final presentation, I think, of their report will be at the end of August 19th. August, August. August 19th, they'll be here giving us their final solutions. <laughs> Or findings or recommendations. One of the things I was a little disappointed in, the, we shared, uh, the town of Louisville, they had a, just an online survey, right? And I don't know through we engage Louisville. And I didn't realize until just midweek last week that that survey was available to Superior residents, that they were seeking our input as well. There was actually a radio dial, where do you live, Louisville or, or Superior, and then filling in your address to verify. And that's the, so I think it was, and this, the survey is closed, um, but it's, you know, they were asking all the right questions, you know, what bothers you, is it a propeller, is it, you know, jet, is it military, what time today? And a bit of a, from my perspective, a missed opportunity to get input from the residents of Superior. If you were pushing out the survey anyway, getting, whether or not they got 200 respondents or 900 respondents, they probably didn't have to pay anymore. We right. had you known about it, how maybe, we known about it. We, we could have promoted that. We could have promoted it and got some additional feedback in a slightly more structured way. Because you do, t t you know, to your point earlier, the feedback you get tends to be from people that are disappointed, right. not people that are pleased with the airplanes. So right. I would have, I would have appreciated that. But missed opportunity. We could always do it again. But we'll see what that, what that data.
Thanks. Thank you. Brian, you have uh, one question. Any, any like developments? Uh, the baseline study they provided gave a lot of good historical background. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at that. We could send that over to you guys if you have. Uh, mostly pointed out we're looking at flight schools. Uh, I think it's probably the basis of what people are mostly concerned about. And I think most people probably knew that. But there's some illuminating data in there. Thank you. Yeah. And it wasn't just the fact of flight schools. It's really the fact of the pattern. You know, a couple planes. You know, you have two or three planes that are just circling and circling and circling and you know, not coming to a stop. They're just doing touch and goes. You know, and as a result, I mean, you hear the, you hear them when they're landing, you hear them when they're taking off, and you know, depending on where you live in, in town, if you're south of Colton, you're going to be, you know, bearing the brunt of, of that noise. Um, you know, from that touch and go flight school, and apparently there's an uptick in, in volume in the summer months because that's when people like to fly. And it's also, uh, you know, Mr. Walker has talked about it how the, the, the heat has a has an impact as well. You know, people have their windows open so they hear it, but they also it also takes uh, way more effort to climb and uh, you know, warmer weather. So it kind of compounds that. But I'm, I'm interested to hear, you know, what, what the solutions um, are going to be proposed, you know, once Louisville has their you know, outreach sessions that they're having this week and we're hearing from the, the consultants. I mean, ultimately, I think it's going to be, you know, without the voluntary action of the airport to actually do something about it, um, we're going to be a little... Uh, Hamstrung in terms of what we can, what we can do, so, you know, we don't have jurisdiction over the airport. You know, we're not on the land. We, you know, that's in Jeffco. It's owned by Jeffco, so uh, and governed by federal re regulations. So there's, yeah. Can you say they scare a bird away from our parks? Can you sue them because they scare a bird away from our parks? You can sue people for anything. <laughs> 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 you win. <laughs> <laughs> you got about five minutes or less. So. I'd like to hear Final questions. Uh, any more. The other topic I had uh, outside of the airport was the uh, uh, short-term rentals okay. and whether or not that's a continued trend and what you're doing about that, how many complaints, but any other airport discussions before short-term rentals? He's fair in favor of it. <laughs> I, I lost six to one. On um, which? So short-term rentals. Oh, okay. Um, what you, it, so what was the... the we, that hasn't come up this whole year, actually. I mean, we... We regulate them um, the way that we regulate them is as a business, so business use of home, um, and the HOA has jurisdiction on that. Um, there's some definitions for what that, you know, what a short-term rental looks like. For us, it's any time that a lease is less than, I think it's 30 days, but we kind of went back in 30 and 60 days, which one is it? Um, so any kind of, if you're ever leasing any part of your home for any period of time less than 30 days, that's a short, that's a short-term rental, that's a business use of home. You have to ask us for our approval for that, and of course, you know that puts you on our radar for whether you know <laughs> we're getting a, uh, complaints about that. Um, and we saw, we've seen those applications, um, several of them last year, and we approved pretty much all of them. There was one home, one, one, one lot, whatever that. I mean, they were running a hotel, not a short-term rental business. They were renting out different, like three different people rooms in their home at the same night, you know, just, whoa. And there was a lot, that was, I mean, that absolutely became a nuisance to their neighbors and we shut that down. Um, but by and large, I haven't seen at our board meetings this year anyway, um, I don't think, have we seen any short-term um, rental applications this year? We've had very little activity in this regard. And no, and no complaints. And <laughs> How many uh, short-term rentals do you guys have? I'd have to ask, I don't know. For so sure you approved, short, just to clarify, you approved short-term rentals inside of 30 days? Yes. We well, we would approve anyone that rents. I want to say it's under 90 days. It could be longer, but yeah, I, it, the use case is usually certainly an annual like, lease. We would not right. approve. You can rent your home as a whole. Sure. Um, period. I guess the, kinds I of, the kinds of applications we typically see and typically approve are: we have a walkout basement, and it's got its own entrance, and we would rent this for, you know, weekenders, you know, parents' weekends and things like that. And it shouldn't necessarily increase traffic in the neighborhood and um, that kind of thing. So we do approve those. There is what our policy is and there's what actually happens in practice, right. which are fairly different. Has there been so any our, thought to 
somehow publicizing here's the list of properties that the HOA has approved so that then the community could be a little more self-policing on it. I know I've gotten that question of, hey, my neighbor's short-term renting, and it's a little bit of a black box where I'm like, I don't know if it got approved. You'll have to ask the HOA about that. It's not a bad idea because, yes, in practice, as you alluded to, you understand most are not approved. I mean, what you see out there in Airbnb home away, most have not been approved. Yeah, uh, I, I will tell you that if I ever happen to notice on any, as a member, not as a board member here, but as a member of your HOA, if I ever notice that you had an agenda item to approve a short-term rental inside of 30 days, I'd show up and I'd bring every single neighbor I knew to show up. I did not join an HOA to live next to a, to a short-term rental. I think it's the absolute wrong decision. And I would not support any board member, HOA board member that supported that. No exceptions. I'm probably a little conservative in that I'd like to see it be six months. That could be debatably excessive. Um, 90 days has been thrown out there quite a bit. To be clear, so I'm talking about inside. I'm talking about the, you know, the weekender. Of course, somebody, should, somebody wants to rent 90 days, six months. That's reasonable. I'd like to see it at 180 days. That's a re that's reasonable. But if you're running. I heard a clearing of the throat, so <laughs> I will keep it at that. Well, I think there are a lot of people in the community who are pretty pretty against Airbnbs and short-term right. rentals. So my thinking is just if you were to publicize, hey, here's the list of the ones that are approved, I think very quickly you would have a list of the ones that are illegally operating right. because community members would take it upon themselves to figure that right, out. But any of those ones that are not approved, they could just come to the HOA and get approval under the existing process. Only if right. the HOA well, approves them based on the subjective criteria. Well, and as you might expect, who's coming to us? People are coming to us after a neighbor has already complained. Right. People are not willing to, I mean, you know, persons, um, are not coming to us on an ad hoc basis where they're more of the policy and um, uh, I guess making uh, you know, the determination be approved. So maybe maybe a little education and outreach to the community in the next newsletter that goes out that says, hey, do, do you understand that you know you can operate an Airbnb under the current uh, you know, policies that we've adopted, but you need to go through an approval process. And if you're aware, you know, and maybe list the ones that have been approved. You know, Here's the, the list of the ones that have been approved. If you're aware of an unauthorized Airbnb operating in your neighborhood, please. Are you guys getting a lot of complaints about Airbnbs or something? No, no. Okay. I get some, but I get, I, again, that's where it's a little bit of a black box of I don't know what's approved and what's not approved, so I just refer people to the HOA. I think if I'm not sure if we're at liberty to share that information or not, but. We could look into it. And even some that have been approved, we've issued cease and desist orders where we've told them that they can no longer uh, rent their property at all due to nuisance. Sure, which, which makes sense. The yeah. definition is qualitative, but um, yeah, we have concerns when we have multiple complaints or complaints from neighbors. And we have to make a subjective and somewhat arbitrary decision as to um, you know, how to handle this. Yeah. I mean, there should be, bottom line, there should be. They said people agree to the CCNRs, so they should be coming to you for approval if they want to operate a business or do a short-term rental. They should absolutely. Can we enforce a thousand dollar night fine or that, that's up to I, I think that's up to you guys. But why does one separate the short term rental out as a business? What about they can? They have to get approval too. I mean, technically, I mean, technically, technically according to our policies, I know every desk business that operates in Rock Creek needs our approval. Like literally. Clint, I'm a senior yet. <laughs> Just saying. Just get an office in Lewis. Oh, that's Thank you very much. <laughs> my wife has taken over my what right. used to be my office. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, do we technically need, govern all those businesses, right. too. Good. We do need to wrap up. But I think Final. the suggestion for maybe an outreach during the next newsletter is a good one. Consider that. It's been really nice meeting with you guys. It's been a long Thank time. Thank you. So, Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for, for having us. Yeah. Really yeah, appreciate, appreciate all your work. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. your service. <laughs> yes. Likewise. Yes. Likewise. <laughs> all right, we'll get out of your hair. Good.
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue our work session. We have a one advisory committee interview that we'll do um, right now. We have a advisory committee interviewee, uh, Twyla Papp, for yep. Historical Sir. Commission. Hi. If you don't mind coming up to the podium and just introduce yourself, give us a little quick introduction, and uh, we might have a few questions. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize I would be up here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm just applying for the um, Historical Society position, and I sent them in a little sort of a resume, not really. Yes. But I have some spare time, so I thought it would be interesting to join. Well, good. So. We appreciate your interest in, in the committee. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate your interest in the committee. We've got uh, a lot of great committees and commissions in town, and uh, yeah. they, they all thrive with the um, interests and in, in, uh, yeah, activities of, of individuals. So we appreciate your interest in it. Yes, I've, I've met a couple of them, so they're lovely people. Thank you. Thank so. you. We have we might have a few questions from uh, board members, if, okay. um, if you don't mind. No. Nope. Just have a nope, little Q&A informal. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Uh, I think I read, although I don't see it, um, that you have previously donated to the Historical Museum? Uh, we what did, did. What did you donate? Uh, an old telephone. Wonderful. Yeah, and um, I think a saw and some spices for the kitchen and some small things that we've had. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it was a nice note, too, to get back. From them a uh, thank you so it's it's a pretty special committee yeah, we have good, and a special a good group. committee right a good, good committee sure they meet on um they're unique in that they meet during the day most of our committees are in the evenings are you uh fridays at 11 a.m uh, thir yeah, 10. I, I, that's what i said you didn't <laughs> no, I said Thursday at 10.30. It goes to the Friday, Friday at 10 a.m. Fridays Friday at 10. 10 o'clock, yeah. <laughs> Are you available during that time, Fridays at 10? Great, thank you. I am, sure. <laughs> so. Okay. Other questions from the board? Okay. One final question that I have to ask yeah. all all applicants is okay. do you have any potential for conflict of interest like you um, are, are writing a history book or something and might uh, somehow benefit from membership and no. the answer most people have is no, no so okay <laughs> very good Not at all. well we'll be acting on this uh, appointment at a future meeting so okay. we thank you right. for your um, application and interest okay all right thank you thank you we will adjourn the work session now and be back in five minutes for our regular meeting